salty party in my mouth. When it comes down to fasting, everything that ever poses a problem has to do with minerals. So I came up with this drink that's gonna help you balance out your minerals, help you retain the minerals within your body, even during a period of time when you're not eating. So let's break down the recipe and get right to the science as well. So all of the ingredients that I have in front of me will make sure that you don't break a fast, okay? We've got some salt, we've got some lime juice, we've got apple cider vinegar, we've got cream of tartar, and we've got water. And I'm gonna break down how everything works together. First and foremost, I've got 10 to 12 ounces of regular purified water. And all I'm gonna do is add about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar to it. Just gonna eyeball that there. Now the whole reason that I'm using apple cider vinegar is simply because it is high in acetic acid. And I've talked about this in other videos before, but all acetic acid is, is a carboxylic acid. And what that means is as a synthetic carboxylic acid, it ends up enhancing your body's mineral uptake. And I've talked about so many times, the biggest issue that you face when you're fasting is usually your minerals, okay? You end up depleting minerals, especially if you're hydrating a lot, which you should be. So we wanna do everything that we can to preserve our mineral intake. The other thing that's gonna help you do is help you maintain your blood sugar a little bit better. Maintaining your blood sugar throughout the period of a fast can help you immensely when it comes down to cravings. When you have these big rises and falls in blood sugar, that's what's gonna stimulate you to want to eat and want to engorge yourself with food that you shouldn't be touching when you're fasting. But also, it's gonna increase your insulin sensitivity. It's gonna make it so that when you do break your fast, you're going to have a better effect from the food that you do eat. So it's very, very important that you have the apple cider vinegar in there. Okay, next up, we have a very small amount. We have about a quarter to a half teaspoon, your call how much you really wanna go with this, of cream of tartar. Now, cream of tartar is super high in potassium. It's a byproduct of winemaking, believe it or not, and it has no insulin response, so it's not going to break your fast. One teaspoon of this stuff has over 495 milligrams of potassium. That's a lot of potassium. You might be wondering, why do you need potassium so much when you're fasting? Well, you need a lot of minerals, but when you're fasting, you burn through potassium really, really fast. And when you have low levels of potassium or your levels of potassium and magnesium are out of balance, you can end up feeling very, very weak. And when you end up feeling very weak, it's gonna make your fast that much more difficult. It also has to do with the balance between sodium and potassium, which I'll get to in just a second. So you don't need much of that stuff, but next we're gonna move on to a half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. Now the simple reason I'm using pink Himalayan salt is so that you end up having a full abundant profile of minerals, okay? There's not just sodium in this stuff. But the primary reason we're using it is the sodium. Again, when you're fasting, you're depleting minerals a lot. As you're drinking water and your cells are going through their autophagic response, you really are burning through minerals. So sodium is critical. What's gonna happen is when you eat your first meal after fasting, your body's gonna be so hypersensitive to sodium, you might find that you bloat up, you retain water. And if you keep your sodium level somewhat elevated throughout the course of your fast, it's going to diminish that contrast effect. It's gonna make it so you have a lot better of a reaction. Now, additionally, we need to make sure that we have this balance of sodium and potassium within the body. If you have too much potassium and not enough sodium, and too much sodium and not enough potassium, it throws off the ion exchange. You see, there's this very delicate balance, and it involves something known as sodium potassium ATPase, which is an enzyme that helps the cell regulate water and minerals that come in and out of it that ultimately create energy. So yes, by having sodium and potassium in balance in this drink, you can increase your energy levels naturally without caffeine throughout your period of fasting, but also make it that much easier when you do break your fast. Okay, then lastly, I have a simple ingredient and I have the juice of one whole lime. Now here's the thing with limes. A lot of people will say, okay, limes, there's some calories in that, is that gonna break a fast? It's a tough gray area to really understand. The fact is, is that technically, if you're doing a long-term fast, it would break your fast. It technically has a caloric effect. But if you're just intermittent fasting, you're doing it a few times per week, it is such a negligible effect, it's not gonna trigger an insulin response. And that insulin response, like something you would get from branched chain amino acids, that's what we want to avoid. So I'm just gonna add the juice of one lime here, and that's about all we're really gonna to need to get the effect. The reason I'm using limes instead of lemons is simply because limes contain a high number of limonoids. Now, lemons have limonoids as well, but limes have even more. In fact, eight different kinds of limonoids. And there was one study in particular that I thought was pretty interesting that really showed how limonoids could benefit someone that is really going through a fasting period. Now, this study was published in the Journal of Agriculture and Food, and it found that limonoids increase levels of glutathione S-transferase in your body. All that means is that it's helping stimulate the production of glutathione. Glutathione in the body is our body's inherent 
ability to detox, okay? So the liver produces glutathione, all of our cells produce glutathione, and it has the ability to neutralize free radicals that are flowing around through our body through traditional cellular metabolism. Now, when we're fasting, our bodies are sort of in this cleansing, detoxing state. So why not add the extra benefit of boosting our glutathione levels so that we can detox even better? So the limes are actually gonna help you get more detoxing benefit out of your fast, which therefore makes it that when you do break your fast, you're gonna feel a lot better and get more of an effect from your food. So that's all there is to it. Then you're gonna mix it up. Now, mind you, you can add some monk fruit if you want. Monk fruit won't break a fast, neither will stevia. I'm gonna just drink this stuff straight up because I don't mind the taste, but if you need it a little bit sweet, a little bit of stevia will help you. I just want you to keep in mind, anytime you put something sweet on your tongue, stevia, monk fruit, Splenda, whatever, it's going to likely make you hungry later on down the line. Any kind of super sweet mechanism like that is going to likely trigger your body to crave sugar in the future. So just mind you on that so that you don't end up having cravings later on down the road. And there you have it. This will not break a fast. And quite honestly, it's kind of a salty, citrusy, weird treat. So you may be wondering, where's the magnesium? Jigsaw is a magnesium company. Well, the simple fact of the matter is, you should be taking mag SRT from Jigsaw throughout your fasting window, simply because it's going to give you the sustained release magnesium that you need to maintain your blood levels of magnesium throughout the course of your fasting period. So add some Jigsaw mag SRT on the side with this drink and you're in business. As always, keep it locked in here with Jigsaw Health, and I'll see you in the next Science Saturday.